Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Quentin, but you can call me Q. Today I am going to uh, show you a visual proof for a Google interview question. So the Google interview question is about uh, the probability of forming a triangle when you break a stick in two different points. So this uh, interview question has been already um, analyzed by the YouTuber Zach Starr, in which he is giving a very nice uh, visual proof where uh, basically you obtain the probability by building a, a equilateral triangle in which he shows that the probability to obtain uh, such a, a triangle by breaking the stick in two points is equal to the uh, ratio of the area in the middle here divided by the area of the entire equilateral triangle. So at the end, it proves that we are having a probability of 25%. So I find this video very nice and the visual proof very nice. But what I thought was missing is a more concrete visualization of the position of the breakpoint in that um, video. So what I'm going to do here is to show another visual proof of the 25% probability by explicitly representing the position of the breakpoint X and Y. So for those that maybe didn't watch the video from Zach Starr, I'm going to uh, formulate the Google interview uh, question here. So let's imagine that you have a stick that I represent like this and you randomly choose two breakpoints on this stick. So let's say you choose a breakpoint here and a breakpoint there. Now you obtain three pieces uh, represented by the segment A, B and C. Are you able to form a triangle with these three pieces? And here visually you can see that the answer is yes. If you are taking this segment and you put it here, and you're taking that segment and you put it there, you can see that it is totally possible to obtain a triangle. And here you have it. Now, this example works well, but let's try with another example. So I'm going to take the same stick, but this time I am going to break it in a slightly different point. So let's break it here and there. And now you can see that you have a little problem it will be very difficult to form a triangle with these three segments. And we are going to explain why and deduce some necessary and sufficient condition on the length of the three segments to form a triangle. So what we can see visually, uh, the reason why we are able to form a triangle in the first case here and not in the second case here is that the length of the segment A and C uh, is, uh, when you combine them, is shorter than the length of the segment B. So a necessary and sufficient condition for three segments A, B and C to form a triangle is to make sure that the length of this, uh, these three lengths verify the following inequality. So first we want that the length of A plus C are greater than B. But by symmetry, we want this inequality to work for all pair of uh, length, all pair of, of side. So we want A plus B to be greater than C. And we also want B plus C to be greater than A. So now it is clear that these three inequality are necessary and sufficient condition on the length of your free segment so you're able to form a triangle with the three pieces. And we are going to use that uh, lemma, we can call it a lemma, to, um, to find another visual proof on the position of the breaking point to make sure that, uh, to, to, to obtain the probability of obtaining a triangle by randomly choosing the position of these two breakpoints. So now let's uh, formally formulate the problem so we are going to start with a segment right here. And we are going to assume uh, that this segment has a length of one. We can generalize it to any length, but just for the sake of simplicity, we are going to assume that the length is only one. 
Now we are going to assume that we have a breaking point at a position x and a break point at a position y. So you can see there are two k's on the position of x and y. There is a first case where x is lower than y and there is another case where y is lower than x. And so we are first going to analyze the, ca the case where x is lower than y and we are going to see by symmetry that it's very easy to deduce what happened in the case where y is lower than x. So in the case where x is lower than y, we have to deduce based on the value of x and y the length of the three pieces we obtain based on the two breakpoints. So we can see that the length a is simply x, the length b will be y minus x, and finally the length c will be equal to 1 minus y. So now that we have our three lengths that are being defined, we are going to use this necessary and sufficient condition here about the three inequality to translate them in terms of x and y. So let's start doing this. So a plus b, let's start with that one, is equal to uh, x plus y minus x. And we need this quantity to be greater than c, which is equal to 1 minus y. Then we have uh, b plus c, so y minus x plus 1 minus y. That should be greater than x. And finally, a plus c, so x plus 1 minus y. That should be greater than b, which is y minus x. So now let's simplify this three inequality. And we see that for the first inequality, we can simplify it by simply saying that 2y is greater than 1. This is because we were able to simplify the x here and there. And in the second inequality, we can also simplify the y and we obtain uh, 2x is lower than 1. And finally, for the third inequality, what we obtain is that 2x plus 1 is greater than 2y. Okay, let's continue. So these three sets of inequality are equivalent to saying that y is greater than one half, x is lower than one half, and finally, y is lower than x plus one half. Now let's draw the position of x and y on a two-dimensional space. So we are going to represent the axis of x and y. So let's say here we are representing y, uh, x and here y. Here we will have the value of 1 here as well. And here we are at the origin. So x and y can only have value in this square of length of side 1. And let's remember that we were just um, working on the case where x was lower than y, so we can only analyze uh, this part of the feasible region. So we need to have a value of x that is lower than y, which means that we are only analyzing this region for now. Uh, in that region, the necessary and sufficient condition to make a triangle say then y must be greater than one half. So let's write one half here. And x must be lower than one half. So let's write one half here. So we need to be in this tiny square. And we have another inequality that say that y must be lower than x plus one half. And y equal x plus one half is represented here, which means that the only region where we can be in order to make a triangle is this region colored in red. Now let's remember that we have only explored the case where x was lower than y 
And we must also uh, see what happened for the case y is lower than x. But this is actually purely symmetrical. You just have to take the all the equation that we have made here and there and just exchange y and x. And visually, by symmetry, you can also see that what happened is symmetrical uh, compared to the axis y equal x. And you can easily deduce that for the case where y is lower than x, the feasible region to obtain a triangle is defined by this region, which is the reflection of the previous region by the axis y equal x. So your feasible region is represented right here. Now, let's remember that we are assuming uniform distribution of the value of the uh, breakpoint position. And that means that uh, if we are drawing a random region, like let's say here, the probability of, of x and y to belong to that region is simply equal to the area of that region divided by the area of the entire square of length one. So the probability of x and y to belong to a specific, specific region because of the uniform distribution is simply the ratio of the area they should belong to divided by the entire area of all the position they can take. So finally, we have the solution to our problem, which is that the probability to obtain a triangle is equal to the, the area represented by this region in red divided by the area of the entire uh, square here. But it is easy to notice that the area of the red region is equal to, so let's call it red, is equal to one fourth. And so this give and the area of the entire square that we are going to call S is equal to, well, one multiplied by one, which is equal to one. So finally, we have the, the probability to form a triangle is equal to one quarter. So that is 25%. So as you can see, this demonstration gives a nice visual representation of the 25% probability based on the position of the first and the second breakpoint that are represented on a two-dimensional space. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Please don't forget to like it if you enjoyed it. And please let me know in the comment if you have another demonstration for this nice interview question.